What's up guys, Brandon Kessler here at Cabo Cribs. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today we're gonna to go ahead and discuss eight of the different financing options that you have here in Mexico. Um, there's a bunch of different options and I'm gonna start with the ones that I think are the worst options or, you know, it depends on you, but the ones that I don't like and we're gonna go ahead and finish with the best options. Starting with number one, it's going to a Mexican bank. And the reason why this is on the, be the beginning of my list and why I don't really like it is because, for one, it's not easy to get approved because being an American or a Canadian, you don't have a credit history. So that being the case, it's gonna be very hard to get the loan. And even if you do get financing, you're gonna have a really high interest rate and we're talking 10, 12, 15%. And especially now back home when the rates are lower, actually they're just starting to get a little higher now, but still you're gonna have uh, much better options towards the end of the list here. Now, number two, a lot of people don't know this one, but if you have a self-directed IRA, you could go ahead and use this, um, you know, to, towards purchasing a house in Mexico. Again, not at the top of my list, but that is an option. Number three, number three is going to be seller financing. And again, this isn't um, super popular. Of course, it isn't popular really in the States. It isn't popular here in Mexico either, but that's all up to you and all up to your creativity. And of course it does happen. Typically this happens when you have a friend or a family member or somebody that like this who you actually really trust and you guys already have a bit of a relationship or some, something along these, uh, these lines. Now I've seen it happen and sometimes people get a great deal, but typically these last between, you know, five to 15 years. Obviously you're not gonna do a seller financing for 25 years. Um, you know, it's, you just don't really typically see that kind of thing. And the interest rates, it's just gonna be all on you and your relationship with that person. So it's possible, but again, that's all up to you. So number four is going to be crowdfunding or just private lending. And we're starting to see more and more of this pop up, all these different, um, you know, different websites, different lending services that are giving people five, 6% um, interest, which is uh, great. So it's great really for both parties. It's great for you if you're going to be able to purchase a house with that sort of an interest rate. And it's great for them to be able to lend their money out and, and receive you know five to six percent on that money so if you can find something like that that actually would be a great option so number five this is an excellent option and that's going to be taking out a home line of credit that means if let's say for example you have a house the house is worth a million dollars and you only owe two hundred thousand dollars on it well you should be able to take out a line of equity of let's call it eight hundred thousand dollars you could take that money and then go purchase a home here in Mexico. Now, of course, the numbers aren't going to be exact, and that's going to depend on the, um, you know, on your situation. But typically, you're going to get a, a good interest rate, and that would be one option which you can buy uh, property here in Mexico. Okay, moving along now to number six, and this is one of the better options for most people, and this is called cross-border lending. There's a couple companies out here. One is called Global Mortgage. Another one is called Moxie. There's uh, a number of different uh, lending options. And it depends, of course, if you're American, if you're Canadian, who you're gonna use. But these, uh, these companies will give you a, a, a loan rather with sometimes 35% down, 30% down, and then they will carry a 15, 20, 25 year mortgage, and this will be at a fixed rate. The only problem is typically these rates are much higher in Mexico than they are in the States. So we're talking seven, nine percent, really depends on your credit and things like that. But still, whatever you, uh, interest rate you could get back home, it is going to be higher here. So that's really something to, to keep in mind. So again, uh, that's gonna depend on you and, and your situation. So number seven, one of the best ways to get financing here in Mexico is pre-construction or developer financing. And that's, that means that they're not gonna do a credit check, they're not gonna do anything. As long as you have the, the money down that they're asking for, you're gonna get approved. So sometimes that could be 30%, 35%, usually it's 50% down, and then they'll carry a contract over five years, sometimes 10 years. Uh, sometimes the rates are really good. I've seen 
seller financing with 50% down, and then they'll carry a contract for 10 years at two or 3%, which is amazing. That's not usually the case, but I have seen it. Um, typically, it's gonna be a little bit higher, more like 5% down, or excuse me, 50% down, and then they're gonna carry it over five years at maybe 5%. And these are just rough numbers, but that would be an example. But this can be re just really good for anybody that has cash down. They want to put it down and you know put their money to use because it's such a good deal that when you get the keys you are the value of the that that property has increased so much that you're making 20 30 40 percent uh roi on that uh, initial on that initial money that you've put into this property so i'm going to give you like one real life example i had a piece of property that i was trying to sell for my neighbor my neighbor actually is a uh, developer and he was selling uh, these these condos in a, in, a, in a nice area it wasn't the best area but it was still a, a nice area condos and he was selling the penthouses for one hundred and sixty thousand dollars pre-construction and i was like wow that's ridiculous but at this time it was nothing it's just dirt okay so i wanted to wait and before i showed my client this so i wanted to wait until they had the had until they had built some store, some structure. I wanted to wait until they had built some structure and so I could show my clients something. Well, in that time that I waited, the property went from one sixty to $300,000 pre-construction price because in the beginning it was just dirt and now it's close to being done and they seen, oh wow, we're selling these things like crazy. We've priced it too low. Well, it's too late. Now, now the prices went up. They sold all the properties almost immediately and yeah, we, we lost out on that deal. I mean, he could have basically doubled, almost, you know, almost tripled his money had he went in early. Or, you know, really that was my fault as well. It's both our faults, to be perfectly honest. But you live and you learn. So if it's a good company, if it's a, uh, you know, somebody that you know is going to finish the project, then, you know, that can be honestly one of the best ways in which to, uh, you know, get amazing ROI on your income, or excuse me, get amazing ROI on your investment. So, something to think about. All right, number eight, that is cash, cash money. If you come and pay with cash, you're going to be able to get the best, uh, the best deal. I mean, most people that buy in Mexico or buying a second house are typically, they typically can come and negotiate a very good deal because they have cash and they don't have to use any of these other things. It's a much easier option for the seller. I think this is a pretty obvious one, but yeah, cash, cash is the best here, here in Mexico. All right, guys, I hope this was uh, educational for you guys. Please like, subscribe. If you guys have any questions, you can put them in the comments below. And of course, message me, Brandon at CaboCribs.com or my Insta, BK Cabo. See you guys. See you in the sunshine. All right. Take care.